Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video to the channel. So in this video we're going to be doing kind of a series which you guys really do seem to love. I'm going to talk through how I got to 110, 120 or 200 mil in a certain skill. And today is going to be runecrafting. Now the reason I've decided to do runecrafting is because that's the last skill of the announced 110s coming to the game over the next six months. And I thought with this one I can finally sort of like close off these skills which have been announced. And then when the others are announced, we can do the 110s and we can basically just re-roll this series for the new skills once they are announced coming to the game. So runecrafting um, was a tough one to be fair in the early days. I really did struggle and for me, the only sort of reason I got runecrafting to 99 to like max pretty like a long while ago was because of a few things. One, runespan came to the game and we'll be doing a little bit of a cover of runespan very, very shortly. And also effigies. Now effigies, back then you could camp effigies for certain skills. For me, it was that boost to runecrafting and agility I really needed to get me over the finish line because towards the end, I was struggling when I was maxing and runecrafting really just wasn't it. However, when I did runecraft, I did do quite a lot of ZMI because that was the best XP in the game. But I also did a fair stint of things like nature runes, blood runes, death runes, any runes which were profitable at the time, I runecrafted, but I did it in stints. So I always said to myself, if I did something like 5,000 of this rune to put a little bit of GP in the bank, I could go and do Slayer for so much amount of time and then go make 5k of that rune again. And I was just runecrafting in periods of time which was sustainable where I wouldn't burn myself out of a skill at once. Runecrafting though, the journey times was painfully slow. So even doing like these 5,000 runes at a time, I wouldn't really break much more than, I can't remember it being like 100k XP. So it was really a big chip on like chipping the levels down. A system of effigies though did help a, a bunch. I would try and get my max cap of runecrafting a day just through effigies and effigy assisting. It's DG, where everyone used to go for looking for assists. That was one thing I did do to get to 99 as well, but I did it for a combination of effigy hunting, rune span. I did a real big period of rune span, and in hindsight, it helped me out a lot today. So, rune span was good because it was AFK. It's something I didn't really have to pay attention to, um, even though you weren't getting a profit of normal runecrafting. I was accumulating runecrafting points. The reason why I like this so much now is because it means I can buy things like the massive pouches. As you can see, I did have the Greater Runic Staff and I'm a massive fan of the Greater Runic Staff. I was a farming nut back in the day. I used to runecraft herbs all the time. It was the thing I enjoyed the most. And to have this staff and have the ability to cast the farming spell, which gave you an update on all your farming plots, it meant that I could go and sit at Runespan for like 70 minutes to normally an hour and a half so everything was grown. And as soon as everything was ready, I could use my staff um, just to cast a spell and then do it. Now, they have changed it to where you can view this at the farm, but I like casting this whenever I'm around. Uh, I do need to have the runes in the pouch because it's in the staff. But not only that as well, I think the staff has aged really well and looks really good. So yeah, that's the good thing about Runespan is that I've got the points for all the massive pouches. So now going forward in runecrafting, I do have that available. I don't have to worry about going to Runespan anymore because I have got it there. So from 99 to 120, there's a bit more of a bigger contrast of what I was doing because that's when runes crafting started to change a little bit. We've had so many like little nice little updates. Recently, the quality of life updates where you can have your pouches filled um, and your familiar filled and it can be set as a preset. I love it and I will probably be doing actual rune crafting now to get to 200 mil. Along with a fair stint of this first item we're going to talk about, which is Protein Essence. This, with bonus XP on a double XP weekend at the Soul Altar, is incredible XP. And if you're someone who really, really doesn't enjoy runecrafting and stacking your daily spins on runecrafting, that is how I would suggest you get 110. I would hoard your Protein Essence or your Unstable Essence as well. Wait till when a double XP comes and then go for the Soul Altar. The problem is with the solo set, it's quite quest locked, so you do need to do a bit of work, but you have got time now to get that done. Normal solo rune crafting as well isn't too bad. It's a lot more AFK than the rest. It's a lot more when you're charging the altar, it gives you a bit of downtime. You're not having to rush and be perfect with every single run to save time because you're spending so much time charging the altar. So I quite like soul rune crafting because it's a blend of normal rune crafting and doing rune splat. But items which are going to be useful to you. So we've gone over the pouch, the wicked hood again, the daily wicked hood because it's just a free couple of hundred K. And obviously over the year that will really, really rack up to be something quite decent. Unlock the ethereal outfit as soon as you can because not only is it going to give you bonus XP, it's going to give you the ability to store essence in the outfit. And the head also works as a wicked hood so you get the absolute benefit of the wicked hood without having to use it and using the full set. 
And then finally the brooch. I bought a brooch because I've not got any urns, but you can actually get room crafting urns. So the urns are important, but I also recommend the urn enhancer. Also, along with urns, familiars, if you're doing normal room crafting, the Abyssal familiars are really helpful, but give you bonus essence as well. And also abusing the power burst of sorcery, which will give you double essence whenever you can use them. It's got to cool down afterwards, but again, it can ramp up extras. With normal runecrafting as well, you'll get things like magical thread as loot. And runecrafting as a whole is so different nowadays. I would rather do normal essence runecrafting than actually do rune span. With the amount of rune span points I've got though, I don't think I do need to do rune span for the foreseeable. So if you were to ask me now, how would I runecraft to get to 200 mil? I would like to do it on a 50-50 ratio. I would like to do most of it with necromancy runecrafting. Necromancy runecrafting is such good profit that it's kind of hard to ignore nowadays. It's going to be between 30 to 40 mil per hour which is probably apart from like Croesus the best skilling money making method you can possibly do and you can also get some pretty decent XP as well. In terms of the other side what I'll probably do is save any protein essence for runecrafting on a double XP. I kind of think in a minute runecrafting essence is probably the best use of protein just because of how good the XP is on a soul altar and then that way you can get a decent chunk of XP while the other side of runecrafting you're making to profit as well but what I would suggest with runecrafting is find out what works best for you. You might enjoy rune span a lot more than active runecrafting because you can AFK and do other stuff on the side, or you might enjoy the sheer profit of actual normal runecrafting, doing necromancy runes or other runes, depending on how you like your setup. And again, it's what fits best for you. You need to have a try of it. You need to sort of feel it out. Decide what you want in terms of decide what method works best for how you like to play the game, and then go for it with that. Now, one thing I did make a video on, and I'll make sure to put it in the corner of the videos as well, is the Runic Atuna. Now, I didn't do enough of an insight, in my opinion, whether I would use that consistently as a method, but the XP was very good per hour. My only sort of downside to that is there are some runecrafting altars which just aren't good GP, and I'd kind of stay away from if possible. But again, that's something worth looking into if you're interested. It has gone down a lot in price, and it might be something which could really help and aid you doing runecrafting as well. But runecrafting, I think, is going to be one of the more interesting 110 skills coming. There's going to be some big, like, ideas or big resources linked to runecrafting, especially with magic. If they can tailor the runecrafting and magic sort of balance really well, you could see magic gain a bit more of a foothold in the game. They kind of messed up a little bit with the Masterwork 2H. I don't think that was done as well as it could have. But if they can get the magic and runecrafting balance right, I think we could get some serious weapons coming to the game, which could really improve the mid to mid high level combat triangle as well maybe magic can make come back and get a bit more involved we'll have to see but in terms of what essence they can make what multipliers we can have or maybe we have a new branch of essence altogether could have a massive impact as well because if there's new essence and new runes coming into the game that could mean a new spell book new spells i think you can get a lot more out of rune crafting and magic combined maybe even more than woodcutting and fletching woodcutting and fletching will bring a whole raft of content there's gonna be some massive things come off the back of that but i think rune crafting could be just as good however that is going to be the end of this video again i hope you guys have enjoyed these series i might put this into a little playlist because i think these are starting to gather a bit of momentum and they always seem to do very very well so thank you guys for that i really do appreciate the love and support you i guess on these episodes if you have any suggestions on any other skills i've not done yet which you want me to do drop them in the comments and i am more than happy to do them i think so far we've done crafting wood cutting fletching now we've done rune crafting and uh, there'll be another one i've missed off as well but if there's any other skills you want me to do 120 guides for or how i trained it let me know in the comments and i'll make sure to do them as well i hope you guys enjoyed this video again like rune crafting is not that many strands to it as opposed to some other skills really just to go over it again you've got rune span normal rune crafting protein rune crafting as well the normal rune crafting you've got between normal runes and necromancy runes but i have done a combination of all of these because i think at different times different parts of these rune crafting skills appeal to me and as well there's a nice balance between active and a lot of gp and inactive and very afk but the good thing is is if you're going to rune craft actively for money you are going to make an awful lot of money as a result but thank you guys for watching once again if you have enjoyed please 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 hit that like button it really helps me out Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon in the next video.